How you doing guys? We're back for another uh, Hoagly beer review. We have a special beer today. This is becoming a little bit of a tradition here, a very exciting one. Um, the latest offering from Instant Gun, it's their seasonal they've been doing since about I think 2009 now. Their Canada Day Oak Aged Beer. Alright. Now as they've been doing the last couple years, um, well since last year anyway, <clears throat> they've been having a local artist do the artwork on the box. They, they do a little contest I guess where they have people submit uh, pictures and they pick the one that they think represents Canada the best. Alright. So let's just see what uh, this one here has to say. I'm not going to go through the uh, tasting notes and stuff like that. Uh, I did that the very first time I reviewed this beer, but um, this beer is changed up every year. Um, this time around it is uh, aged for 49 days, carefully matured. Uh, the previous two editions were both matured for 54 days. Uh, the 2011 version was done in what was it? It was bourbon oak aged barrels, bourbon oak aging, um, and it was done for 54. It had ale malts, Munich malts, uh, golden oats, I believe, and um, fuggles hops, and that one was 8.3% alcohol by volume. Yeah and they did 160 barrels of that released. This one here is 180 barrels and this one is 7.7 percent .7 alcohol by volume so it's a bit lower um, and the 2010 edition was also 54 matured for 54 days that was I think that used um, I think it was, they didn't even list as many of the ingredients that time around. They, I think they only listed it was uh, the special ingredient was uh, uh, rye crystal malt, I guess. So uh, basically, what they did is they caramel, uh, the caramelized the uh, uh, rye malt and uh, imparted some special flavor. And that one was 7.1 percent alcohol by volume, I believe it was. So it's going up and down over the years. All right. 7.7% products of Scotland. This is a special thing, of course, to celebrate Canada Day and to say thank you to Canadian drinkers because we uh, were, a, were and continue to be a very good market for them. Uh, so that's really cool. So here we go. We got it in the bottle here. It looks a bit like it might be a bit lighter than the previous two editions, which were fairly mahogany in color, ruby red mahogany. Yeah, it is. It does look lighter. That's much more amber in color. Lighter color there. The head seems a bit more tan than uh, previous editions. That's what, what did they say was in this? Uh, alongside the malt we added aromatic barley malt which imparts the beer's rich toffee color blah blah blah. We use Goldings hops this time around, so Kent Goldings, um, and yeah, they oh aged it and all that good stuff. So let's try the aroma here. Hmm, interesting. Now the 2010 edition uh, was pretty big on the barrel aging aspect, like you could really get the character of those uh, rye, of those rye qualities uh, and the oak aging. You could get, re you really got them, they really came out pretty strong. Uh, last year's edition, was a, there was a lot less uh, emphasis on that. Um, it was much more about the, the maltiness itself. This one here has got a fruity, almost like a, a nice kind of a sweet fruity smell to it. Um, it's got some of that traditional sort of innocent gun in-house barrel age sort of smell. Definitely get a bit of the oak. A little smattering of vanilla, not a lot. Much more stronger on like a toffee maltiness this time around. 
and a little bit caramel kind of character. Smells smells thick on the nose. Like, I know that sounds weird. Every time I say it, it sounds weird. But I think most people who uh, have an appreciation of craft beer probably realize what I'm trying to say. It just it smells kind of like sort of semi musty, thick, like almost like you could cut the aroma with a knife in the air. Hmm. Fruits are raisiny, um, raisin fig, date sort of uh, side of things, and a little bit of appley smell there as well. And you definitely get the uh, Kent Golding hops coming out in the end. Um, it's got that earthiness, and a, there's a subtle fruitiness there as well. Uh, smells very good. So we're going right to the taste. Mm. Interesting. Um, malt flavors actually take a bit of a back seat this year. Um, they're there, and it's fairly malty beer. It's about medium bodied. But it's much more sort of subtle, t toffee caramel kind of taste much more about like a really really drying finish like you get the wood and those English uh, the Kent hops um, Kent Golding hops really come up like very very earthy like very earthy like we're talking like uh, biting into soil kind of thing Subtle fruitiness as well on the back of the tongue. Balances fairly well. Uh, very lingering finish on this one. I think it's this might be the longest um, dry lingering finish any edition of this uh, series has had so far. Don't get any alcohol. Well masked. That's really, really good. Um, I'm not particularly surprised that it's good because Ennis and Gunn have yet to let me down. Uh, they've always made at least beers that I c could consider good, and most of the time they make beers I consider above average to like awesome. So, and I dare say this is one of the awesome ones. That's. That's excellent. They've done it again. Uh, so I'm going to give it a very high four. So that's almost a 4.5. But uh, I'm just I'm going to give it a very high four this year round. Uh, very very good beer. Excellent beer. Um, well worth picking up if you can find it. So um, cheers to Nissan Gun again for another great product. Cheers to all my viewers out there. Have to be Canadian. Uh, happy Canada Day if you give a shit about that. Um, I personally don't, but this might give you a reason to anyway. If you don't, like I, like I don't, but uh, awesome. Four out of five for Innocent Gun Canada Day 2012, and I can't wait till uh, next year for the next edition. Thanks, guys.